like newborn infants. You must long for the pure spiritual milk, that in him you may grow to salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, my friends. It's lovely to see you. I love this Sunday. It's called Divine Mercy Sunday, or Low Sunday, or St. Thomas Sunday. It's got lots and lots of different names. But it feels somewhat different, because it's the end of the octave of Easter, the eight-day octave of Easter. We've been celebrating the Feast of Easter all week. We have been eating excessive amounts of chocolate. Well, I have been eating excessive amounts of chocolate. And so today feels a little bit different. And so we feel like we're coming down from that celebration. And so we're called to remember the divine love of Jesus Christ. The love that he has for us and that we are called to pour into the world. We'll talk more about that later. We also today remember and honour the life of His Royal Highness Prince Philip. We'll be praying for him in our bidding praise and at the end of Mass we will say a special prayer for him, for his soul, for his family and we will end Mass by singing the National Anthem together. But first, my brothers and sisters, we start this Mass like every other by calling to mind our own sins and our transgressions those things that have separated us from our relationship with Jesus Christ. You are called to the contrite of heart. sinners. seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us sing in glory to God our Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only be God Lord God, Lamb of God, 
Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with our whole Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Please sit for our readings. The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of believers was united, heart and soul. No one claimed for his own, used anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. The word of the Lord. The response of the psalm. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. To the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished. I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. A second reading is from the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. 
we can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult, because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus Christ who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Well, unless I see the Lord. Unless I see the holes that the nails have made in his hands, and can put my fingers into the holes they made. And unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. 
Push your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. Now, as I said at the start of Mass today, is Low Sunday. And we're all feeling a little low one way or another. Not just because of the excessive amounts of food that Easter brings with it, but because the party of, the, of Jesus risen is over. And we're now effectively in the hangover period. And it would be fair if you felt a little churched out. But Low Sunday isn't called Low Sunday because of our self-induced hangovers, but because it closes the octa octave of Easter, the eight-day period from Easter Sunday until today. It's also sometimes called St. Thomas Sunday. And the Sunday reading is always the same. John 20. 19 to the end and it always relates to the appearance of Christ to his disciples this time with Thomas present now you'll all have heard of Saint Thomas he's otherwise known as Doubting Thomas hardly a great title but here you go Thomas is also referred to as Didymus the twin and although the name Thomas is actually an ancient name not quite as English as it may sound, we're not really sure if it was his name at all. In fact, we don't know a great deal about Thomas full stop. He only appears in Matthew, Mark and Luke when he's listed with the other disciples. And he only appears in John three times. What we do think we know is that St. Thomas travelled to India and spread the gospel there. And for many centuries, the Christians in Kerala have called themselves St. Thomas Christians. The information that he went there, and was martyred there, is the subject of a long document written in the 3rd or the 4th century called the Acts of Thomas. And it's a terrific and fascinating read. It's part of what's called the apocryphal writings, the bits that are considered important of the history of our faith, but are not part of the Bible. If you've not read it, it's really worth going to read. It's considered popular romance more than a historical document. It's a real thriller. It was probably written in the interest of Gnostic teaching rather than as an accurate record. So it was written to help tell a story rather than record history. Now, it's certainly not impossible that St. Thomas went to India and that he also evangelized Parthia. And it's thought that his final resting place, or at least where his relics have ended up, are in Edessa in Mesopotamia, which is of course currently Turkey, dangerously close to the Syrian border. But for the moment, let's stick with the Thomas that we do know, the Thomas that is recorded in John, the Thomas we've heard about in today's reading. We meet him first in John 11, verse 16. Let us also go that we may die with him. He was referring to the death of Lazarus, a good friend of Jesus. And the other disciples didn't want to go. And they certainly didn't want Jesus to go because it was dangerous. But here is Thomas. He was there at the vanguard ready to go with his teacher and his friends to share his faith. Even if it meant death. More loyal Thomas than doubting Thomas. He would rather face death with his Lord than to live without him. We next meet him in John 14, verse 5. 
Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? This time, Thomas is asking an honest question that the other disciples are not. Jesus is telling them that they shouldn't be troubled, for Jesus already knows what is coming, but to have faith and to believe in God, because in his house there are many dwelling places, and if he were to leave them, then they would know how to follow. Not now, certainly, but later. Now you can imagine Jesus expounding this information to the disciples, and the disciples sitting around the table, all nodding sagely, oh yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus, of course, Jesus not really understanding what was being said and so Thomas Thomas was the one who said hang on a moment what do you actually mean how can we know the way you've not told us the way Thomas was confusing what Jesus was saying with an actual place and that question leads to one of the most well-known and well-loved verses of the Bible I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Doubting Thomas? No. Honest Thomas. The Thomas who won't sit there and nod sagely, pretending to understand what Jesus is saying, but will ask the honest question. A difficult question. And we meet Thomas for the final time in today's reading in John 20. And sadly, it's where he gets his nickname from, Doubting Thomas. Thomas was not willing to believe that Jesus was risen because he had not seen him. Now, the previous two times we've met Thomas, he's demonstrated that he is not fearful and doubting, but loyal and honest. We don't know where Thomas was the previous Resurrection Sunday, we're not told. But you can easily see that he must have been distraught. This loyal and honest man wasn't there because his world had been totally shattered and torn apart. He wasn't there because his heart was broken. His teacher was dead. So now he's being told about the Resurrection of Jesus. He's being told about the presence of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the peace of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, the promotions of the Lord, and the provisions of the Lord. All of these things happened on the day Jesus revealed himself to the other disciples. And that's a lot to have missed. It's hardly something that's easily told. It's something you have to see for yourself. It's easy to see why he responded the way he did. I don't believe you. He'd not placed his fingers in the marks of the nails. He'd not placed his hand on, the, on Jesus' side where the spear had torn into his flesh. Imagine this loyal and honest apostle this man who had been told that his teacher was dead, being told that he was really alive. And so Thomas really was low. This was the ultimate low Sunday. Why should he believe? Why should he just take their word? One last time, Jesus replies. Once again, Jesus is there to hold the hand of this loyal, honest and questioning follower. Jesus appears to the disciples coming through locked doors and says to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my sides. Do not doubt, but believe. And you know what? Thomas does. My Lord and my God. So doubting Thomas? No, more like faithful Thomas. For me, the story of Thomas through John is one that I wish more Christians would hold on to. It's a story of a man who is not afraid to ask the difficult questions. A man who is not afraid to challenge or to speak truth to power. He is a man who does not leave his brain at the door when he encounters Jesus. 
He is a man who embraces his faith and continues to question. I'm a little bit in awe of St. Thomas, to be perfectly honest with you. I think he teaches us an important lesson. I think he opens the door for us to have a greater understanding of Jesus. So this week, I'll head back to my Bible and read those three passages again. This time not thinking of Thomas as doubting Thomas, but thinking of Thomas as loyal, as honest, and as faithful. Amen. So with the thoughts of that loyal, honest and questioning man in our mind, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Knowing that the risen Christ is here among us, let us pray in his name for the Church and for the world. We pray for God's blessing on every group of Christians worshipping today all over the world. And we pray for all who doubt the truth. We pray that their hearts may be set ablaze with love, that we may, that we may walk as children of the light. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all areas of the world which are torn apart by hatred and violence, famine, disease, religious differences. We pray for an end to war and a deeper commitment to peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who face family rejection if they become Christians for all families divided by beliefs or persecuted for their faith. We pray for the children of our church, that they may grow up strong in the faith with good role models to guide them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who wake up to the prospect of another day filled with pain, for those who long for someone to spend with them, enjoying their company, and we pray for sight that notices needs. And we pray for the needs of Yolanda de Gale, for Sister Angela, Helen Holman, Beryl Higgs, Norma Piggott, Renee Holman, June Borton, Verity Thompson, Daniel Sibley, Wayne Campbell, Mary, for Iva, Maxine and Megan, Gary Savile, Claire, Anthony and Greta, for Father Rob Church, Francesca and Clarissa, Desmond Penk, Les Robinson, for the crew and families of HMS Westminster. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who mourn, and we pray for those they love and miss, commending all who have died to the everlasting arms of the God of love, in whom there is life in all of its fullness. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, Deal graciously, we pray, with all who mourn, the members of the royal family, this nation and all the nations of the Commonwealth, 
that casting all your care on you, we may know the consolation of your love. We pray for the soul of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, for all who have died this night without access to priest or sacrament, for those torn from the womb, and for those whose anniversary of death falls this week, for Annie New, Laurie Murray, for Lolita Hines, Margaret Fortescue French, for Damascene de Souza, Lillian Smith, Ilza Burton, Anne Harker, Polly Sadler, and Esme Beckles. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let thy perpetual shine upon them. We make our praise with those of Mary, whose trust made our salvation possible, and we turn to her with arms outstretched as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the silence of God's attentive love, we name our particular needs. Hear, O Lord, the praise of your people, as we remember before you His Royal Highness Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and grant that we who confess your name on earth may with him be made perfect in the kingdom of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, accept these praise for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, Blessed you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to set before you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the gifts and the offerings of your people, the gifts of love and of patience, of peace and of joy, of care. For those who have cleaned the church, prepared its flowers, for those who are repairing the toilet door, for those who have given by the parish giving scheme, and for these gifts here today received. We bless all of them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored unto our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of you and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us ready to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Justin, our Archbishop, Jonathan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor, and ever. Amen. 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 At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you, my brothers and sisters.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who comes to take away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe in eternal life. Amen. Blood of Christ keep you safe in eternal life. Amen. Dear friends at home watching around the world, now is the time to make your spiritual communion to reach out to Jesus and to ask him to enter your heart.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit. Well, I put the National Anthem in the wrong place in the playlist, didn't I? <laughs> so this week, uh, everything is back to usual after a light week last week. So we have morning prayer and mass every day, morning prayer 9.45, mass at 10 o'clock every day this week. Evening prayer has shifted. So evening prayer has previously been at 5 o'clock. But um, what I've discovered is that there's quite a lot of people who start to come in at 6 o'clock, just as I'm starting to lock up. And it's because they finish work at half past five in various places around Hayes. And so for the next term, we're going to try and move evening prayer to six o'clock to see if those people who were coming at about that time might like to come for evening prayer. So we'll be open a little bit longer in the evening. So evening prayer all this week at five o'clock. Tuesday evening prayer and the chaplet of Divine Mercy. And on Wednesday evening prayer and the rosary as usual. Now we've got a confirmation class straight after, ma after Mass today, so if you are being confirmed or admitted to Holy Communion next Sunday, please do stay. We'll be about 20 minutes, it won't be very long at all. We'll just go through the service and we'll just go through those promises that you are going to make. Uh, we'll do that straight after Mass. Now next Sunday is a really, really big Sunday. The Bishop is coming, Bishop Jonathan is coming. It's the first time since my licensing back in July. And so I'm hoping we can put on a real St. Anselm welcome for the bishop. And um, there's the old joke of the bishop arriving at church and there being nobody there. And he said, oh, nobody told the people I was coming. And the priest said, no, we told everyone you were coming. <laughs> so it'd be nice if we were full next week and the bishop can see what an amazing community of Christians we have here as we welcome eight people to be confirmed into the Church of God. Eight people. So it'll be a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Do please make a big effort to come next week. And to get ready for that, we will be cleaning the church on Saturday at 10 o'clock. Cleaning and decorating. So there's balloons and ribbons and all sorts going in next Saturday at 10 o'clock. We need to mop everything and bath everything and dust everything so that it's all lovely for the Sunday, so that those people being confirmed and welcomed into the church may see it for as big a party as we would really like to have. Um, we were due to have a PCC meeting today, but we postponed that to the 25th of uh, April because of uh, the events of this week. Are there any other notices? No, I think that's it. Anything else? Yes, he's not here. Okay. Then please stand, my dear friends, as we sing God Save the Queen. Eternal Lord God, who alone spreads out the heavens and rules the raging of the sea, who has compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end, be pleased, most merciful Father, to receive into thy almighty and most gracious protection the soul of our brother Philip, and grant that with him and all the faithful departed we may at the last enter into the haven of thine unending joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks.